Please join me in welcoming Justice O'Connor. The field of digital gaming and learning reached a tipping point of sorts when former Supreme Court Justice and octogenarian Sandra Day O'Connor stepped on stage at the 7th Annual Games for Change Festival at Parsons, the new school for design in New York City. She was there to discuss how her mission to get civics education back into schools around the country led to the creation of a series of online civics games housed on a website called Our Courts. Our Courts was a project that was started at Georgetown Law in partnership with Arizona State University um, because Justice O'Connor was concerned about what people knew about uh, the judicial branch of government. And she wanted to focus particularly on middle school students where students are starting to get a sense of themselves as part of a broader community and part of a broader network. And that's how I got involved in this effort to develop some civics education on a free website available to schools all across America. A website that includes games as part of the teaching process, games that kids can play online. We started out with the judicial branch of government. And that was a lot. We had a little constitution to educate about and a whole system of the third branch. And we developed games called Supreme Decision and Do I Have a Right and Argument Wars. I mean, these were great games. And um, students can play a lawyer and uh, argue cases and, oh, it, it's great. These games proved so popular with learners and teachers alike that our courts evolved into iCivics, a more comprehensive resource for civics education. The feedback that I get is that students stay up past bedtime to play and the games are good for the whole family. And feedback from the teachers has been wonderful. Of the teachers who participated in the evaluation, all of them said they would use the games and lessons again and they would recommend them to their peers. So. We decided to broaden the civics curriculum, abandon just focus on the judicial branch and give some credit to the other two branches of government as well. I guess that's wise. And we've managed to do that. We've released some new games which address the executive and the legislative branches as well. And students can address some of the most pressing issues that we face as a nation. For the most part, um, the teacher is the facilitator in this process rather than the leader through the game. Some of our games are meant to be played um, in the classroom on a in a single computer classroom. Um, those games really focus on class discussion of each of the decisions in the game. So the class as a group makes decisions about how to proceed in the game and how to um, make their way through it. Others of our games um, really are meant to be individual experiences or small group experiences with the teacher or uh, after school instructor or parent as a facilitator. But while by all accounts the games have succeeded at facilitating civics learning, the challenge has been getting them into the place where they can help the most, schools. Justice O'Connor really wanted iCivics uh, to get into the schools. Now that's not always an easy thing to do. You've heard of bureaucracies? <laughs> you know what the biggest bureaucracy in America is? It's the public school systems. And they, they are in every state. There's no czar in any state who can say to the schools, do this or do that. We have separate school districts with school boards. We love our system. But believe me, there's no hierarchy and no czar. And what we have discovered is that to get these used in the schools, we have to go to each state and find a chairperson and the chair has to find a committee and they have to contact all the school districts. And it's hit or miss. I mean, this is a tough proposition. So 
We're working on it, but it's hard. Another thing that we're really planning on doing is working more on the bridge between our games and things that students can do right now as students in civic engagement in their own communities as seventh and eighth graders, ninth graders, tenth graders, what they can do. Um, we're hoping to create forums on our site for discussion around those activities, for recognition of particularly successful activities, um, for organization of students around particular public policy issues and ways to tie the games to those issues that kids care about. And while iCivics continues focusing on its mission to teach middle schoolers how to be better citizens, it's also managed to teach at least one civics expert that games can be more than just fun. I'm an old grandmother. I'm not a techie. I don't even operate my computer well. And thanks to some of the people in this room, I have become a convert to Games for Change.